Nvidia is up over 227% over the last 12 months, but is it too late to buy this company? Well, when we take a look at Wall Street, they believe that this is still a strong buy, one you should include, and it isn't too late. We're going to find the answer in today's episode. We can see just over the last week, it is down around 4%. One of the reasons is due to the fact that companies in the semiconductor industry, similar to Intel, Nvidia, have slipped on China market pressures. Well, today's episode, we have now the FY24 data. We're going to take a look at a lot of the metrics, update them to understand our analysis for 2024, 2025, and also run it back in through our valuation model. We're going to take a look in particular at the discounted cash flow model. We have the 2024 free cash flow, which shows some extreme growth. We're going to look at a low, medium, and high analysis to understand in our intrinsic value, is this a company we should consider adding and is it still too late? So first, let's jump into the historical performance. Now, yes, over the last five days, it has dipped around four and a half percent. But over the last year, some incredible performance. And over the last 10 years, if you had been buying this, you would be laughing all the way to the bank up 19,328 percent. Now, we can see while it is trading towards the upper end of the 52 week range, it has called from the highs that we saw not too long ago of nine hundred and seventy four dollars. It does pay a yield, but feels very trivial to discuss at 0.02%. And it is one of the largest companies in the world at 2.17 trillion. So let's take a look at our analysis today. A few things we want to cover very, very briefly. First one is for those that don't know, this is a company that is increasing its top line revenue dramatically. When we go as far back as 10 years ago, January 2015, this company was making 4.7 billion on their top line in revenue. Fast forward 10 years, they now make 61 billion, which is an incredible increase, not just from January 15, but also from the previous year in January 2023. When we take a look at this, we can see some exponential growth, very rapid over the last year. And we will discuss shortly why we are seeing this growth and where it is coming from. In terms of the bottom line as well, not only do we see a large increase in the revenue, but their net income from 10 years ago, 631 million going astronomically to 30 billion in 2024. And again, when we look at it from a graph perspective, it is exponential growth that has really shot off just over the last few years. So top line and bottom line are increasing at a very rapid rate. When we take a look at the health of this company, well, their cash position has also increased. They now hold a very large amount. Even in 2015 at 4.6 billion, it was fairly healthy. They now hold 26 billion. And again, we can see even with their cash, it is something they have been building up over the last 10 years. Comparatively, when we do look at their total debt, which is always key to gauge when looking at the health of a company, their total debt, whilst it has increased from 1.4 billion to 11 billion, they still hold a lot more cash than their total debt. So we do believe at a very high level, so to speak, that this company does have a great balance sheet. And we can see it isn't a surprise that the total debt has been increasing. Nonetheless, their cash is more than enough to pay off all of their debt if they needed to in any one day. So no worries with this company health wise, as well as this, their numbers, they're churning on their revenue, as well as their bottom line net income. And when we do compare this to others in the semiconductor, we have Taiwan Semiconductor, Broadcom, AMD. We can also see it has a very strong performance. I mean, just over the last year, up 228%. Over the last five years, again, still the best performing. And when we zoom out over the last 10 years, we can see no other company comes close to NVIDIA. We see, in fact, the second best performing AMD up 4,600% and Broadcom up 2008. Now, yes, we know it has had an incredible performance, something that is most likely not to be repeated. But we would say do bear in mind that past performance is not an indicator of the future. We're just highlighting here how strong of a performance NVIDIA has returned over the period, over the last year, as well as the last five years and over the last 10 years. Now, in terms of looking at their growth rate, well, this is a very strong performance. We're talking A plus across the board in nearly every single metric. Year on year revenue return up 126 percent, triple digits. Revenue forward looking, they are expecting 71%, still very, very strong. 
When we look at their growth, the EBITDA, so the earnings before their interest, tax, depreciation, amortization, triple digits. I mean, we are talking about a phenomenal company that has a lot of growth year on year as well as forward looking, hence why we do see the very fairly well high valuation. Now, a few things that we also want to point out, return on equity, growth 410% year on year, forward looking, still expected to come down, nevertheless looking very healthy. We don't really touch upon any of the dividend metrics, given the fact that this isn't a company that you really hold for the dividend. It is, I guess, a small bonus alongside that large share price return. And then when we look at the profitability, a lot of positives to note here as well. Gross profit margin, 73%. Now we've covered on a previous episode of NVIDIA, but their margins is something that is increasing as well as their revenue. Not only are they bringing a lot more revenue over the last five years, but they are also increasing their essential gross profit margin. We see the same with the EBIT margin, the earnings before their interest and tax at 54%. And a lot just alike here about every single one of these metrics, something that if you want to take a look at, you can pause the screen as well as the other metrics we've gone for just to digest a lot of this information. Then finally, what we do want to point out is as well that when we do take a look at their earnings, we can see the essential black bar graph is depicted is what their analysts were expecting. The blue is what actually they reported. So in FQ1, so the financial quarter one in 2024, they beat by 17 cents on the earnings per share. For financial quarter two, they beat by 61 cents. And we can see every single financial quarter over the last 12 months, they have beaten, which is a very strong indicator of this company's performance. Now, when we look forward to the financial quarter one in 2025, they are expecting 405% growth to that earnings per share year on year. Now, we can see it does start to slow off and taper on in terms of the expectations over the next four financial quarters. But this is the growth that is expected from this company, something just to consider. And we can see their forward PE is currently around 35 0.48. If they do hit their earnings estimate in January 2026, then this will be lower to 29.24. So it really does depend on whether or not you do believe NVIDIA will be hitting all of their targets. And we will run through in our valuation shortly the low, medium and high targets that we have set and whether or not there is any upside based on these targets. So very strong performance in terms of their earnings per share. Now, a few things that we do cover tend to cover, in fact, on every episode. So we just want to keep that for transparency. 4% insider ownership. Now, we do see 327 million worth of sales by these insiders. And in fact, you can see since 2021, there are a lot of insider selling across the board. So again, it isn't something that is a bearish signal. It doesn't mean that the company is going to drop sharply, just something that we like to show. And what we would typically say, if we see insider buying, which we don't see in this case, that is something that is a bullish signal. Think about why an insider, a director, the CEO or the CFO would ever buy shares. It is because ultimately they believe the share price will increase. Something we want to point out, we can see, in fact, just over the last few weeks of March or the end of March, a few directors did in fact sell shares of NVIDIA and we can see altogether it totaled over $10 million. We also see here on the beginning of March, Mark Stevens, the director, also sold around $10 million worth of shares. So again, something to consider. For example, he did sell at $853. The share price now is above that. So just things we do like to let you know, but as always, do pay a lot of this information with a pinch of salt when you are analyzing. Never copy any trades from institutions or insiders. Speaking of institutions, well, institutional ownership sits at 65%, $47 billion worth of outflows by these institutions, $660 billion worth of inflows during the same period. So institutions clearly do love this company. It is one that they have in their portfolios. We see one of the largest inflows come in quarter two of 2023. In fact, Q4 of 2023 as well, significant amount of buys. In the latest quarter though, what we do know in Q1 of 2024, whilst we don't have the full data set yet to conclude, we can see more selling than buying, 104 million versus 50 15 million bought. So a few things just to note there. Now, a few pieces of information that we want to bring to your attention if this was something that you hadn't known already. NVIDIA did recently buy five AI stocks, of which one is up significantly. Now, you may have heard of this news. If not, this is what we just want to let you know. They have bought a few of these companies, and these are those that you can see on screen. They have Sound Hound AI. Arm Holdings, which is a very popular one, which has been up very, very strongly over the last few months. 
we have Nano X Imaging Recursion Pharmaceuticals, two simple holdings. So we can see that Nvidia are using a lot of that cash that they do have on their balance sheet and they are essentially diversifying into different areas of AI. For example, SoundHound AI develops voice recognition as well as conversational AI technologies. So it is something just to consider. We have pharmaceuticals that helps AI or using AI for drug discovery. So it is quite interesting the way that Nvidia are going. They're not just specifically looking at their core businesses. They are looking at increasing those income streams. Now, one of the reasons why they are doing this very, very importantly is because the AI market is set to increase over the next few years. 2023, we can see here that the size is around 242 billion. It is expected to go up to 738 billion in 2030. And we can see a lot of this is coming from the orange bar, which is machine learning. But there are different areas where this can be used. We have natural language processing, autonomous and sensor technology. But the overall conclusion here is that this market as a whole is increasing. There is a lot of money that is expected to be spent by firms in AI. And one of the biggest beneficiaries of this is going to be NVIDIA. Yeah. So let's get to look at the metrics. Now, what is nice to note today is that we have the FY24 data. We want to look at the free cash flow per share as this will really affect the numbers when we come to our valuation. Now, personally, I ignore earnings, but it is there available if you want to use it or if you want to research based on this data. Essentially, it is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting. But again, every investor uses different information. So looking at the free cash flow per share, we can see some very large growth over the last 10 years with the largest growth coming in. 23 to 24 and we are expecting double the free cash flow per share in 2024 to 21 dollars 30 in 2025 so there's a 100 percent increase to the free cash flow do bear that in mind as we will consider that number when forecasting the free cash flow growth over the next 10 years sales growth as we already mentioned it's well above what we look for for steady moderate companies of three to seven percent we're looking at triple digits in 2024 they are expecting as we looked earlier at 70 to 80 percent increase into f Y25. So growth is expected to continue with NVIDIA. Numerically, we have covered this already, but you can see it again in a different format. And on the shares outstanding, we do love it when companies do share buybacks, returning excess cash to investor pockets. We can see that NVIDIA have done the opposite. They would have diluted your position over the last 10 years, very marginally though. And in all honesty, when you consider the share price return over the same period, you probably wouldn't really care about this very minimal dilution. In terms of the ROIC, very, very strong consistently. Whilst we aim for above 12% for semiconductors, we can see that Nvidia has been above that every single year with an astronomical year in 2024 of 61% and if they do continue with these numbers with these metrics and this could be a very strong company for the portfolio or at one to at least keep on that watch list with certain price targets in mind. In terms of operating margin as we mentioned they're not just increasing their top line revenue but they are also improving on their margins both gross margin and operating margin and we know operational efficiency with the margins increasing 2015 it was 16%. 2024 at 54% is very, very strong and incredibly attractive to potential investors. Free cash flow margin well above the minimums that we see for this industry. The last year alone, 45%, one of their best years, and we can see it is increasing over the longer term. So it is something just to keep in mind, ensure that NVIDIA are at a minimum keeping up to the previous years as they are increasing at such a rapid rate. Net debt to EBITDA, now earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. What this signals to us is the dividend safety, which, as we mentioned earlier, isn't something we're interested in. But secondly, and more importantly, the balance sheet strength, essentially showing us zero across the board and into FY25, showing that it wouldn't even take them one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. So a very strong balance sheet for this semiconductor industry. Now let's jump into the stock analysis. Let's get into the main point of the valuation. And as always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now, typically on the channel, we do run through every single one of these models. But for today's episode, the only one in all honesty that we do believe is relevant for NVIDIA is the discounted cash flow model. Now, we have the free cash flow year on year, as you can see. And today's episode, we have updated for the new free cash flow for FY24. And we can see what an increase from FY23, 610% to 27 billion. So that is incredible. It takes their average growth over the last 10 years to 94%. 
Now, as I mentioned, we are going to be looking at three different rates, a low, medium and high. What we've gone for in today's episode is a medium target of 25%. Bear in mind, when we did look at the free cash flow metrics, management are expecting a 100% increase into next year. However, we're not going to go with 100% consistently over a 10-year period. We're going to be a lot more conservative at 25%, more conservative than the average growth rate. Using that with the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by the shares outstanding, and we get an intrinsic value showing $1,000. And with the market value at $880, that is an undervaluation signal. Now, a few things to bear in mind. This is on the basis that the company will continue to increase their free cash flow at 25%, which is, as we said, lower than the average and lower than the next year's rate that they expect of around 100%. Now, for the low rate, we have gone for 22%. So if you do believe that 25 is a little bit too high and you want to be more conservative, at 22%, we do see here the intrinsic value would be lower than the current market value with an overvaluation signal. So we can see here with a 22% growth rate forward looking, we get a negative 7% upside. With 25%, we get plus 14%. Now, for those who believe it will be much higher, especially given next year is 100%, at 30%, we are getting an intrinsic value of near $1,400, which is where a lot of investors are having very high price targets for NVIDIA over the next 12 months. And as we can see, that would give NVIDIA from today's current value a 58% upside straight away over the next year. So let's go forward with what we believe to be a fairly conservative estimate of 25. The intrinsic value for today's episode is purely the DCF model that we just ran through. And don't forget, you can click on the pinned comment below so you can grab a copy of this valuation model to get to the intrinsic value as well as the acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio and those on your watch list. So in terms of a margin of safety, as always, we do start off with 10%, which we do use if we believe it meets three criteria wide moat, strong financial metrics, and good forward-looking data. Now, we can see at 10% margin of safety, it would be a buy up to $903.55, giving an indication that right now we believe NVIDIA has at least a 10% MOS level. At 15%, you would be looking at $853, not too far off the current trading price, but as we can see here, right now it does look around 10% to 15% a margin of safety. In terms of Wall Street, well, they believe a price forecast of $990 on average. As we said, some essential investors are looking at a price target in Wall Street of around $1,400. And you have some who believe $900. Taking the average of all of these, we come to around $990. So we see upside of 13%, indicating that they do still believe it to be a buy now. As always, though, do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Is this a company you are looking to buy? Is this one you hold and considering selling? Or maybe you are on the sidelines just waiting for a certain price target. As always, if you did enjoy the video, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. And finally, just to let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article. If you want to find some undervalued dividend stocks based on dividend yield theory, or if you want to read through any of our other articles all completely free, do click on that pinned comment below and sign up. As always, catch you all in the next episode. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and have a great, great day.